Hello, I'm Andrea Mandel here at the People and Entertainment Weekly Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm here with the cast of Wildflower, a very special film that's up for acquisition here at the festival. And I'm really excited to talk to you all about it. Um, so I'm here with the director, Matt Smuggler. I'd like to start with you because I understand this is a more personal story for you. And I was hoping you could briefly talk about how Wildflower connects to your own story. Yeah, so um, this started with, it's inspired by my niece, and it started with a little video that I was going to basically go and shoot for her to help her get into college, because she essentially did not think that there was anything interesting about her or her life. And meanwhile, you know, her mother has a cognitive disability, and her father was in a car accident and also has some, um, has a disability as well. So. I went out there and just really like a companion piece for her to get into college and then very quickly realized that there was so much more going on and really kind of this incredible story that I thought could make an amazing movie and to celebrate this family through their sense of humor and um, their strength and so that's kind of that's how it all happened. And Kiernan uh, Shipka. Hello. <laughs> uh, yes, takes on uh, somewhat of the role of your niece in this film. Inspired by, Inspired yes. Inspired by. So, Kiernan, I have to confess, I did watch Mad Men on the plane on the way here. It was one of the offerings. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, there's it a was fly really. On my leg. Sorry. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay. Oh, it's off. Uh, do I, what episode? It you was. You surely couldn't have watched the whole series. No, I watched like two and a half episodes. Nice. And it really, and in one scene, um, your on-screen parents are at a country club and, and you and your on-screen brother just run up and, and grab January oh, Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it took me back. And you, but you've done so much work since then mm -hmm. and taken on so many interesting roles. And I'm curious what attracted you to this, to this part in particular. Absolutely. I was filming in the Hudson Valley. I remember it very clearly last summer. And I got sent the script. And I read it immediately. I fell in love with the story, the character. It made me laugh. I was genuinely crying in a way that was just a good indicator that this was something that was real and authentic and, and needed to be made and I felt like I needed to be part of because I thought it was just a really beautiful story and chatted with Matt. I, I connected with the character so, so much. I thought she was just such a beautiful young woman and there was, there was so much that I wanted to bring to it and I'm, I was really lucky to hop on board and had the best time making it and the cast turned out to just be absolutely exceptional and Matt's amazing. So it was really just a very easy yes is what I, <laughs> what I always say is that reading it, I, I, uh, there was not much weighing pros and cons. It was evidently something that I wanted to do. Um, Samantha, what was important to you to bring to this role of um, Bee's mother? I really wanted to capture what I oh, actually with was. You. Oh, thank you. No problem. This is my first movie. You can tell. <laughs> um, I really wanted to capture, you know, when I, when I saw the costumes, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Cinderella in a tracksuit. And I just wanted to focus on that. And I think if they had cast a non-disabled actor, they probably would have tried to play the disability. But as a member of the community and someone who's neurodiverse, I know that being disabled is just a part of who someone is. And so it was important to me to show this woman who was looking for her Prince Charming, and when she saw him, she was going to get him. And she was living her fairy tale, and I was really excited to get to play that. Well, I will go to your Prince Charming, Dash. <laughs> <laughs> she saw it was me, and then she took the part. <laughs> I would ask a very similar question of you. You play um, a father and a man who's been through a traumatic uh, car crash and is now raising a family and is married. I'm curious what you wanted to bring to his role, to this part as well. Well, uh, it's no secret that I've played a few parts of, uh, uh, before the, of, of men that have been struggling with uh, maturity. In, in a lot of ways, uh, but there was something really interesting that I had to really dig for in this particular character because of the the car accident. What did it cause? How does he react because of it? And 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 skate the line of still driving this family and doing what he thinks is right to to love his family and to take care of them, and yet still have the the fun and simplicity 
and the joy uh, and freedom that 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 was uh, based on the original character. Mm. I know that Jackie Weaver and Gene Smart are not here, but just so the audience knows, they play these incredible dueling grandmothers. Oh yeah, they do in this film. And I just I'm curious if anyone can talk about what it was like being present for some of that. It was amazing. I mean, I had to. A lot of it, I was supposed to be not present because I'm in a coma. And it's not spoiling anything because that is the beginning of the movie. But to watch these amazing actors, everyone, honestly, go at it in this hospital room and to just lie there and observe and listen was honestly kind of a very what is my life moment. Um, we got so lucky with the cast. Everyone just brought their A game and then some. You can't pay for that kind of acting class, just watching them work. It was insane. It was insane. And I asked them, I got to ask them about their process, which I won't share because, you know, it's their process. But, um, and they've both reached out to me after and given advice. And so it's really such a pleasure to have these industry heavyweights tell you how to make a career and how to select parts that matter to you. So they were just so generous with their time. Well, and, and Canon, I would ask you, you play Bee's best friend in this. There's a meltdown while you're shopping for prom dresses that really brought me back. <laughs> <laughs> I, that I feel like the story that is told between our friendship is so relatable, I feel like, to everyone in that age range, maybe like, you know, 16 to 18. Um, I feel like a lot of people will be able to see themselves in our friendship, so... And I wanted to ask the group, what takeaways, what takeaways did you find from making this film? Not only about what B is going through, but what her parents are going through, and what we could all learn as viewers in our own approach to embracing others in our community. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll, I'll just start, and then I mean, it, I think for me, just you know, my sister-in-law um, having a cognitive disability and only wanting to be seen as, in, in her words, normal, which meant having a husband, living on her own, having a job, having a child, and so these are things that you know, for me, it just it makes you really think about what does that word mean to be normal, and so um, you know, and I think. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I think that, 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 that all of us learned and the characters learned along the way about their own self-worth and their visibility and their invisibility and their whole lives and what's really important. And what's really important is acceptance, which breeds joy and love and freedom. I was talking with one of our producers, Kyle, uh, last night, and he shared with me about um, his conversation with Jim Lebrecht, the Oscar-winning director of Crip Camp, I believe it's called, um, and how they talked about how B's parents are taking care of her the whole time because they're letting her be in control because that's what she needs, and that blew my mind. And I, I do think that's how we played it. Like, we, were, we thought that she needed to be in control. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about B's journey of realizing that, like, she doesn't have to. She can accept her parents the way they are. And uh, thank you, Kyle and Jim, for sharing that with us. I think the lesson that B learns in this film is that, sure, her life has, has plenty of challenges. And, and all, everyone's life... Um, has has its own unique set of of difficulties and challenges but b i think learns within the course of the movie that her her parents have such joy and there's such laughter in her household and such a such a joy around life that i think she comes to truly appreciate and to see the to see the beauty in things and lean into things and laugh and sing and have fun when you can is also a huge takeaway for her and i think hopefully people that see it we could all give a different answer and it would work i think there's so many lessons within this film and so much so much fun stuff to take away from it i'm so excited for everyone to see it i think it's central it centers around a medical emergency as a lot of people can relate to family conversion conversions it gets very messy before it gets yeah. better but then everybody hopefully reaches a new understanding. Yeah, it's also that. don't drink too much fireball and then go out. There's, you'll learn that lesson too in the movie. And nobody's family is truly functional. Yeah. Their own style. That's <laughs> all her own fireball. Yes, I did all my own fireball. No, no, no. What is it was normal, just what is functional. Water, 
water. Thank you so much for coming to talk about Thank this. Thank you for having us. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.